Good evening, Richmond, Virginia. I am Brittany O'Neill, VJ of Beyond the Music. I am here at the Tobacco Company with Joey Cook. One of my first questions for you is what made you want to play the ukulele? Uh, so in high school I was always that girl with the uh, acoustic guitar playing the really sad songs at coffee houses, which I guess hasn't changed that much, but um, I uh, have really small hands and um, so like bar chords were like a huge problem for me. I couldn't reach all the way across the guitar. So I was like, well I want to keep playing music. I like writing music and I like started writing lyrics before I started writing the actual instrumentals for stuff. Um, so my grandfather got me a ukulele and a mandolin. He was like, well, small hands, small instrument. So the randomness of this galaxy When you were playing, you were you were you know you were uh, explaining the name of a bunch of your songs. So they're all love song numbers, yeah. and I, I want to yeah. know what, like where that comes from. A lot of my songs don't have repeated uh, phrases in them. Um, a couple of them, they just don't have a chorus really. Um, yes. And it's an entire love album, um, all about the same fucking person, of course. <laughs> Part of my language. Um, but so I just decided I was like, well. I don't really like naming them, and there's, you know, half of it is really happy um, love songs, and then half of it is really sad love songs, and so it's kind of like a relationship inside of an album. Um, that's just like, you know, it's all really beautiful in the beginning, and la la la, and then it kind of gets to the, um, it goes love song number one through six, and then it's um, a song kind of about love, a song not quite about love, a song almost about love, and then a sad song about love, and another sad song about love. So it kind of goes through like all the phases of a relationship. That I've ever seen, and to call you mine would be too motherfucking surreal. Now your 8 bit music's got my little legs moving, and the way you sing brings color to these cheeks every time. Like a child, dear in headlights, could you be my? Did your singing kind of happen after, you know, learning the piano for a while? Did you kind of just like, you know, grow a love for that? Yeah, definitely. Um, I've always had like a love for singing, um, especially with my, my mom was like a choir kid in high school and uh, I was as well. And you know, like when I was little, my favorite activity was to drive around with my mom and uh, listen to the Lion King um, soundtrack. And like, cause she would let me sing the Simba parts cause I have like a low voice and she would sing the Nala parts and it was our thing, you know, it was, I don't know, I've always just really liked it. I was that girl like singing Wicked songs into a hairbrush in my room. <laughs> You'll go your way and I'll go mine. But I'll be so damned unhappy. Why can't you see you're my day and night? Then you will yell in my direction and I'll say fuck you too. And you will go in your direction and I will run until my little blue legs are through. Through with you. And you're about to um, record uh, yeah. an EP? Um, it's complicated because okay. um, it's like you can do it through the track, how many tracks are on it, or the length of it. Okay. Um, so like I have about four or five original accordion songs, um, but at the same time, if you take the length of it, because all my songs are like seven minutes long, it would be considered a full-length album. But I feel weird advertising it as that, um, only because it's so it's not that many songs. So yeah. Features and kill to see.
than you. Well, yell in my direction, and I'll say fuck you too. What are your musical inspirations? You know, where do where do you get um, your inspiration from? Well, I grew up listening to a lot of um, old Broadway music. Um, my mom always makes this joke about me. Um, is that you know, like most like ten year old girls are like singing. Britney Spears and sync in their room and like my mom would come upstairs and I'd be like belting everything's coming up roses and you know she's like never thought that that would happen um, but um, she's also really big into jazz um, like really old jazz so I listened to a lot of Billie Holiday growing up and I've gotten the the common many a times of the uh, yeah so yeah it definitely plays a huge part on it um, but I think songwriting wise um, the first person that ever really impacted me was uh, Kimya Dawson. Okay, um, they're a band called the Moldy Peaches um, that completely got blown up from the movie Juno. Um, but the female singer in that um, is just this amazing woman who just, you know, strums on an acoustic guitar and just like blurts out the most like obscene and blunt things. They, like, there's no sugar coating. There's no nothing on it. And know? I can tell that you do that a lot, right? Yeah, and, and, and I really respect it. Yeah. Another thing is like you, you know, you, you use curse words very, you know, obviously yeah. and, and comfortably yeah. in your in your tunes you know um, does it does it kind of do you do that like thinking about it like do you do you no. write those so it just, just kind of comes, comes yeah it just happens like if I use the word fuck like it's never like completely in a negative manner right like there's right. like a part where I like fuck you whatever but then there's also a part that's like I fucking love you yeah. you know <laughs> like yes. it's never like completely positive or completely negative right. I just I since I was younger like I never really had any uh, my parents never really cared about language she my mom kind of, you know, did it to where, like, if you really feel that strongly about something, then that's a word for you to express that. Right. You know, exactly. it shouldn't be considered a negative yes. thing. Like, there's a difference in, like, loving somebody and, like, fucking loving somebody. Like, there's a difference in it. instrument that you started off with? I originally started off on piano um, when I was younger. Um, I like re I learned by ear a lot and my family inherited an organ um, from my grandfather's mother and there was some like stupid jingle commercial on TV and my little five-year-old self waltzed over to the organ and mimicked it because I learned by ear and so my mom immediately it was like we're gonna start saving for piano <laughs> lessons. Was, that was a great idea. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I thank her every day for it. She did it to where, um, until I was 12 years old, um, I was required to take them. And then when I was 12, she gave me the option of whether, you know, like I'll keep paying for them if you want to keep doing them. But you're old enough at this point to where I'm not gonna force you. I did it until I was 15, until I was like too cool for piano or whatever 15 year olds think. Like every place that you go, do you play music? Do you do no. like open mic nights and yeah. stuff like oh, that? I'm an open mic slut. It's awful. <laughs> it's all I do. It's all I do. So I, I have a question. What you know, um, comparatively speaking, like from Richmond, you know, what, what you know, what's the difference between all these other? Like, what does Richmond do you, do you think has um, like to offer other than all these other? I places? I'm kind of bitter when it comes to Richmond. Like I like I love I love Richmond. Um, Good or Richmond, bad. I love, I love Richmond, I love Richmond. It was my introduction to music, it was, you know, like, my introduction to playing in public. Um, like, I had awful stage fright until, like, I ended up, like, getting kicked out of my house, all of these bad things, you know, and I was like, well, all I have is my ukulele and no money, so why don't I just start busking? Like, why don't I just start doing that? And, you know, it was the easiest way to get over stage fright. It's like, instead of, like, dead on me singing to you, you know, just sit on a sidewalk and sing in front of people that would rather you shut up. You know, like they don't want to listen to you, you know. And we made love next to the James of that lovely river.
Um, I was in the running for a TV show. I auditioned for it in Chicago. Got it. Um, yeah, I made it to the last 150 people wow. in the U.S. Yeah, flew me out to L.A. for it. Did a bunch of auditions. Yeah, yeah. So um, I was in New Orleans um, at the time when I got the phone call saying that I had made it to the next audition round, and because um, I told them that you know like I backpack and like I wasn't going to be in Chicago for it. And so they call me. Um, I got my ticket booked from New Orleans, and then uh, like four days before my flight. I um, I called them and I was like, can you uh, switch my ticket to Austin? Like, maybe. And they were like, are you in Austin? I was like, no, I'm in New Orleans. They're like, are you going to get to Austin? I was like, yeah, yeah. And like the woman just took a really deep breath. She sighed, she's like, you're going to South by Southwest, aren't you? I was like, yes, I can't not. Like, yeah. So yeah, we got a bus ticket. Uh, me and my friend who I've been like with um, for a while. Uh, got a bus ticket out to Austin, ended up playing South by Southwest, which is like the coolest experience ever, yeah. And then um, they flew me from Austin to Phoenix to LA. And um, other than when I was like really young, that's the first time I've ever been to the West Coast. Um, but I liked it. Right after we drink our way. I think that that's all the time that we have. Thank you very much, Joey, for, for being here and playing with us. It was incredible, absolutely incredible. <laughs> Thank you to the Tobacco Company and to Beyond the Music. I am Brittany O'Neill, BJ of Beyond the Music. to our first artist, uh, Joey Cook, who recently returned from a trip to New Orleans. Born and raised in Woodbridge, Virginia, Joey began playing music at five years old on an organ that her family inherited. In the course of her travels, Joey began playing in the bluegrass band in Richmond with David Morley called Poppy Stain. And she currently plays in a band called The Boons. She considers her genre to be a combo of folk, acoustic, polka, and she plays mostly originals with her own twist on a few covers. In the next couple of months, Joey plans to record a demo of accordion music while keeping up with her backpacking adventures. And we're very pleased to have her with us tonight for Beyond the Music on the Tobacco Company stage. Please give a warm welcome to Joey Cook.